So how do you pull the swigger get its name? That is probably the most common question I get asked. And the short answer is without very much thought at all. So I was starting out as a, a pen tester, as a computer hacker. And uh, in those days, this was before Twitter, uh, anything like that, to go and learn and get information, you tended to hang out on forums, bulletin boards, mailing lists, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and you'd often be making posts to ask questions, that sort, of, that sort of thing. Everyone said, you need a handle, don't post under your real name. Computer hacking was a bit disreputable. People didn't really understand it, didn't even know if it was legal. Even, even your employer, who was paying you to do this as a job, didn't really want to be associated with it in public. So needed a handle. And uh, this was before the modern web. And pen testing was mostly aimed at the, the network and the infrastructure layer. And one of the terms you talked about a lot was the term port. Uh, and one of the tools was a port scanner. You can scan a network to find open ports. So in about 10 seconds, I thought, well, um, port is also a drink. Uh, and instead of scanner, you say swigger. Port swigger is a bit of a silly pun. It means someone who drinks port. Uh, and that was it. Uh, I didn't expect it to become uh, known, uh, to become associated with me, uh, to be anything uh, like a business, uh, which it eventually did. And uh, a long time later, uh, we eventually hired some brand consultants and asked them, you know, is, is Paul Swigger, is this the right name? Is this working for us? Is it a bit too silly? Uh, do we need to grow up? And they went and thought about it. And fortunately, they came back and said, you should keep it because it's different. Everybody else has names like Net and Sec and Tech in, in their name. And there's nobody else like Paul Swigger. So at least you stand out, uh, which is what I wanted to hear because I wasn't going to change it anyway. So how did Burp Sweet start? Uh, well, I was a I was a pen tester, just getting started, learning the tricks. Uh, I was also lazy, like many pen testers, and I wanted to automate my job. An awful lot of pen testing is laborious, uh, repetitive, error prone. Uh, you just want to find a way to speed it up. It isn't it isn't that much fun. And there weren't any good tools around, particularly for web testing. So I decided to write my own. My, uh, my initial focus was on automating custom attacks. So I had ideas for placing payloads into an HTTP request in different places, iterating over different types of payloads, sending all the requests quickly, capturing the results. And that was the first decent web testing tool I wrote, and I called it Burp. And that eventually evolved into Burp Intruder. And then along the way, I also wrote a proxy, uh, a spider, repeater tool, various other bits and pieces, and put them all together. And that became Burp Suite. So how did Burp Suite get its name? For no real good reason. So I was, in those days, I was in the habit of writing uh, disposable tools every few days, start on work on some other little tool or other, run with it for a bit, get bored do something else, and I tended to give them all random names without any thought at all. And one day, I was working on this tool, and I called it Burp, and that just ended up being the one that I ran with and carried on working for years and years. I had no idea at the time I started that it would last longer than any of the others, but it did. So why is Burp written in Java? More or less by accident. Um, you probably see a pattern, <laughs> pattern em emerging here. Don't forget, I, I, was a, I was a hacker who could code. I wasn't a real software developer. I'd never worked with anybody else and never had any training. When I started learning to code, I taught myself C, uh, C++. And then uh, when I wanted to make tools with a user interface, I started using C Sharp. Uh, C Sharp was the new shiny thing then and seemed pretty good, worked with that for a while. Uh, one day, uh, I think I got a new laptop at work and I ended up losing uh, my copy of Visual Studio. Visual Studio wasn't free back then, you had to pay for it. And I think I, did, I originally installed it off some MSDN disks that were lying around the office and, and I couldn't find them. So I went and I think I went and tried to download a pirate copy and couldn't find all the bits and anyway, 
I was, I was too tight to uh, pay up for an IDE. Eventually, after a couple of days, got a bit frustrated uh, and just thought, well, you know what? Isn't Java the same as C Sharp? I'll just maybe try, try Java next, my next language. Downloaded NetBeans. NetBeans is free. Got up and running about an hour later. I was writing my first Java tool. Actually, in, in C Sharp, I'd already built a simple tool that was similar in concept to Burp Intruder. And uh, the first thing I did when I got started with uh, with Java was to just recreate that tool because I thought it looked interesting and I wanted to carry on working on it. So I just started again in Java. And uh, that ended up uh, being Burp. And so Burp was actually my Hello World program in the Java language. So today we have real developers who know what they're doing working on the Burp code base. Uh, and if any of them look at some of the really oldest code and wonder why it's in such a mess, it was because li it was literally the first code I ever wrote in Java. So when did I realize that Burp Suite could be a successful business? Well, for a long time, for many years, it was a just a pure labor of love. I was just doing it for fun. I enjoyed thinking about difficult problems, building solutions to them, writing code, and sharing what I built with other people. It, it also made my job uh, more efficient steadily over time. So I got this virtuous circle going where I'd spend some time working on BERT, write a feature that made me more efficient so I could do my job quicker, so I had a bit more time to work on BERT. And that was just really good fun for ages. Uh, but it was doing pretty well. It was nowhere near uh, enough money to live off, but it was just, it was a really nice little hobby to have. And then one day uh, we did some consultancy for a huge software company who were considering uh, buying a web vulnerability scanner. And they asked us to look at all of the scanners that were out there and uh, assess them to see how good they were. Uh, and I was leading that job. And uh, so I did that. My conclusion was, these scanners really suck. All kinds of bugs that were really you know, commonplace, you ran into all the time pen testing, they didn't find them. So I just got to thinking, well, seriously, how hard can it be to write uh, a half-decent web vulnerability scanner? So uh, I decided to do, do it and build my own. Uh, a few months later, it went into Burp Suite as Burp Scanner and Literally overnight, that put a zero on our revenue. Everyone, loads of pen testers are lazy. They love the idea of having a vulnerability scanner built into their toolkit. And uh, it was really successful. And that made me think, well, I can probably live off this. So soon enough, I quit my job. I was able to put all my time uh, into Burp and uh, eventually start to build the team behind it and never look back. So what's my favorite Burp Suite feature? Um, there are probably two answers to that. There's uh, an answer from the heart uh, and an answer from the head. And the answer from the heart is it's probably the manual testing simulator. So this was uh, a really silly joke feature that I put into Burp uh, a long time ago. I can't even remember writing it or why. I must have just been bored one day and it was a bit of fun. And what it basically does, it simulates the activity of a manual tester by sending traffic to the website that you're attacking, you're targeting, just to make you look busy. And the idea was if you're on a, on a pen test and you need to take some time off to, to have a lunch or meet a friend or go to the gym where you just leave this running. And uh, if anyone's looking at the firewall logs or the server logs, it'll just look like you're, you're still busy. Uh, so just release this for a bit of fun. It turned out Quite a lot of people are using it. Uh, we had uh, we get occasional bug reports from users who really missed the point. They say they've been running the manual testing simulator all day and it hasn't reported any issues. Uh, we occasionally, one time we got a, a, a Burp customer contact us to say they'd engaged a pen tester to test their website and they were looking at the server logs and they could tell he was just running the manual testing simulator and they wanted us to look at the logs and confirm this so they could uh, take it up with him. And we kind of said, well, we probably shouldn't get involved. This is between, uh, between you and him. So that's the kind of, that's the fun feature that I, that I think is the coolest. The more serious answer, the answer from the head is definitely Burt Collaborator. So Burt Collaborator is absolutely incredible. It's, uh, it finds invisible bugs. It finds asynchronous vulnerabilities that are only triggered 
after you finished your testing. Uh, it, it, it just finds issues that are completely undetectable in the application's behavior that you can observe as a, directly as a tester or, or as a scanner. This, this really was a game changer. So traditionally, there's just been this dichotomy between different approaches to scanning. So SAST or static application security testing, traditionally people say, well, you know, it has high coverage. It finds a lot of bugs. It also has a huge number of false positives, generates a lot of noise. Whereas DAST, uh, dynamic scanning, has lower coverage, doesn't find as many bugs, but then it tends to be more accurate, doesn't have as many false positives. You take your choice. Well. But Collaborator, we call it OAST, which is uh, out-of-band application security testing. This has way better coverage than DAST because it can see inside the application and it can trigger vulnerabilities that have no visible effect on the application's behavior. But it's also pretty much free of false positives. So if we send a payload to exploit, say, secret injection containing an obfuscated domain name, if something on the server side does a DNS lookup on that domain name, we can be pretty certain that that payload was processed in a SQL query and that it was vulnerable. So it's, it's a fantastic step forward in the whole paradigm of dynamic scanning. So that's the real answer. The overall coolest feature in Burp Suite, I would say, is Burp Collaborator. So who is Peter Wiener? Well, he's actually a good friend of mine. It's not quite his real name. He's a guy, he, he's a pen tester. Many years ago, we were working together on site and he went to, uh, up to a door and buzzed the intercom to be let into the building and said his name and the person on the other end, other end misheard and they said, Peter Wiener? And uh, we just had a bit of a laugh about that and it just stuck as a nickname and we started to call him it. A bit later, I was working on the Burp Spider feature where you would submit forms and send inputs. And when I needed a name, I just decided to use Peter Wiener. Half as a little tribute to him, but just mostly to wind him up a bit. Bit of a joke. And Peter Wiener went everywhere because Burp would submit this all the time when it was when it was spidering and scanning. There were reports of complete mayhem. People with printers where Peter Wiener's name was showing on the LCD screen of the printer. Loads of people whose help desk was getting hammered with 10,000 emails all coming from Peter Wiener when the pen test was on. Some people started to complain. And initially, we, we thought they're just being silly. You know, we, we obviously knew Wiener is a euphemism. We thought it can't be that offensive because it's a real surname, right? A while after that, we discovered apparently in North America, Peter is also, also has a double meaning for, for the same organ. And you put the two together and we realized, well, actually, that does sound a bit more juvenile uh, than we intended. But still, you know, of course, we, go, we aren't too corporate. We like to have a joke uh, and we just decided to let it let it be. But over time, we realized some uh, users were actually getting into trouble because of this. They would go to a, a closed meeting at the end of a job. They'd have to explain to the client what they'd done. And the first question the client had was why Peter Wiener's name was everywhere. So eventually, we killed him off. But the legend lives on. And Pete actually is very proud. This is his claim to fame. When he meets new pen testers, new security testers, uh, he's uh, really proud to tell them that he is the original Peter Wiener. So is it going to be a third edition of WAR? Tons of readers have asked for this, and the publisher absolutely has asked for it. The short answer is no, uh, there isn't. There are really, some really big downsides of writing a book. You do a ton of work all at once. It starts to go out of date. It's, it's not interactive. People can't discover it easily through search. And basically, I couldn't face doing it all over again. So instead of a third edition of WAR, we made the Web Security Academy. And this is online. It's digital. It's interactive. It's completely free for everyone. It's constantly updated. We have over 150 vulnerability labs where you can learn how to find real vulnerabilities safely and legally. So to anyone still reading the Web App Hackers Handbook, now I would say this is the time to switch and discover the Web Security Academy. <laughs> what do we have against Carlos? 
If you don't know who Carlos is, in the Web Security Academy, he is this person who appears in many of the labs, and the challenge to complete the lab is to delete Carlos. And this often involves something like compromising an administrator's account, uh, taking control of the application, uh, and deleting the Carlos user. But seriously, Carlos is known to us in real life. He's a very sinister individual. He is perhaps the epitome of pure evil. That's why we need to keep deleting him. So how did I get into web security without a real plan to do so? When I was at uni, I studied philosophy. Uh, I was there, stuck around a long time. I was there eight years. I did a PhD. I was doing lecturing. I was really considering a career in academia. And then I got a bit bored of it. So I needed a job. As a, as a child, I'd always played around with computers. I taught myself to program in BASIC on things like ZX81, ZX Spectrum. So I thought, well, you know, I'll find something I can do with computers. So my first job was a general IT consultant. And I learned a lot about tech, uh, but it wasn't too exciting. A lot of things like project management, uh, audits, security policy stuff, things like that. And then one day I got to know some people at the company who were doing this thing called penetration testing or computer hacking. And this sounded way more fun. I managed to get onto a training course they were running. Uh, I taught myself a lot of things as well. I started playing around, writing bits of tools to help me. Eventually I got on some actual pen testing jobs they were doing, uh, and that was my big break. I absolutely loved it. I loved breaking into things. I loved being devious. Uh, I loved the kick you get when you own something. Uh, it was full of interesting challenges. I just really loved building things, solving problems, sharing sharing the tools that I, I, I built to do so. It ticked every box for me uh, and I never looked back. So was my advice to someone getting started as a penetration tester? Well, expect to work hard, expect to teach yourself an awful lot. I would say today, the Web Security Academy is the best educational resource for learning web security and hacking. So I would start there. I would learn to code. I would, you can write your own tools. You can customize other tools. You can use the Burp API to write amazing Burp extensions to, to, do, to do crazy things. Writing code means you, you understand how developers think and the kind of mistakes they can make, and that really helps you uh, as a hacker when you're trying to break in. I would spend a lot of time on bug bounty sites. So years ago when I started, the only way you could legally test a site for vulnerabilities was on a paid engagement where they're giving you approval. These days there are thousands of sites on the web that let anybody come and hack them uh, and they will pay you for the bugs that you find. Go to sites like HackerOne to find good bug, bug, good bug bounty sites to work on. I would also read the public reports of bug bounties. There are masses of write-ups of vulnerabilities where you can see how other hackers have found them and the evidence that the evidence they got and the methodology they used. I would also form a network, go to events, make friends in the industry, share ideas with them. But mainly, work hard, keep learning. Web security is a huge area, but it is all great fun. So what is life like at Portswigger? Well, it's not like anywhere else, certainly anywhere else that I've worked. And Portswigger has been shaped by the, the formative experiences that I had in the places I worked before in my career. So my first job was in a, a huge accountancy firm. It was extremely hierarchical, very tightly controlled, full of huge egos, everyone driven by status. It really wasn't my thing. I then moved to a tiny pen testing firm, which by comparison was uh, total chaos. It was great fun. I learned a lot from some amazing people. Eventually they kind of grew a bit too fast and started to lower the bar uh, on who they hired and it ended up not quite as good as it had been. They then got acquired by a really big pen testing company that was a, a listed business obsessed with money and financial targets and, and basically everything changed. So when it came time to build the Portswigger team, I was absolutely fixated on avoiding 
mistakes that I think I'd seen elsewhere. So for me, the most important thing was hire exceptional people. So we have an amazing diverse team. We have loads of software engineers. We have researchers. We have product specialists, loads of writers. We have graphic designers, customer champions, all sorts of different people. But the common thread is that we only recruit the best and they're all exceptionally good at what they do. Other than that, we, we tend to minimize hierarchy. Uh, we do have some, we have structure, we have some teams and we have team leaders, but for us, leadership really is about enabling people on your team to succeed. So it's not about command and control, it's about mentoring and supporting your people so that they can do the best they possibly can. We give people a lot of freedom. Uh, I've never seen the point in hiring a bunch of smart people and then micromanaging them. So we do encourage experimentation, give people freedom to fail. I think that's often how we're at our most innovative. We really we prefer people with a low ego. We respect each other, support each other. We'd like to make decisions by consensus. We share all our information across the whole business. Everyone knows everything that's going on. We, we strive for excellence. We set a really high standard for our work. We work hard. We deliver amazing things. Portswood is changing the world. We are generous. Uh, if you look at the price point of Burp Suite, it's really competitive. Uh, we give away a lot of our output, our research, the Daily Swig, the Web Security Academy is all free. We pay our people what they're worth, we pay them well, we give a lot of money to charity. We're self-funded, uh, so all our growth has been organic. We don't have any venture capital, any private equity owners in play. That is amazing. That means we can make the right decisions, do the right thing. We can focus on the long term. We're not just chasing short term profits. But most of all, we have fun. So I, I started working on Burt just purely for fun, not to make any money, not to be well known. Really, that has never changed. So we're, we're lucky. We love working uh, on hard problems. We love sharing what we build uh, with the world. Well, Portswigger's plans for the future. Well, it's an exciting time to be in cybersecurity. I think it's on everyone's radar, whether it's consumers worried about their data, small businesses who don't have the security skills they need in-house or don't know where to get help. For, for large enterprises, security today is a board level issue. The world has changed, essentially. Security is no longer optional for anyone. It's an essential so keeping the trust of your customers is imperative if you're going to survive. And our focus is on enabling the world to secure the web. And that means giving everyone the tools and the knowledge they need to gain that trust and making it easy and fun, not uh, a burden. So in terms of what we're doing, we always think big. We have huge ambitions for Burp Suite uh, and for our other services and outputs. Web pen testing is in our DNA. We're going to keep uh, Burp Suite the best pen testing toolkit that there is. We've got huge ideas for building on browser automation uh, to support new kinds of custom automated attacks. We, for, the, for, for the scanner, we're going to continue to innovate. We're going to keep up with modern applications and technology, discovering new classes of bug. We're going to carry on combining different flavors of AST, application security testing, together for maximum effect. For enterprises, our focus is really about supporting scan at scale and also DevSecOps and secure, doing security testing in CICD. We're going to we're doing a lot of work on cloud native capabilities so that perhaps we enterprise edition can fully benefit from the huge elasticity that the modern cloud uh, provides. We're going to have more integrations with other development systems, essentially supporting enterprises on that shift left journey uh, as they develop security maturity. Our research team is already the best in the world. We are we're expanding that team. We want to do more. We're currently hiring for a cloud security researcher. The Web Security Academy is always ama is already amazing. We're going to be adding new topics, new many more labs, new challenges and games, that sort of thing. The Daily Swig, we're creating fantastic articles, landing quite a lot of scoops. We want to grow the profile. We want the Daily Swig to be the place to go to get web security news. 
that means we're going to grow the team. So if you're a uh, if you're a like-minded person who thrives on doing the kind of things that Paul Swiggy does, we'd love to hear from you. Other than that, overall, uh, we're going to carry on having fun. It's what we do best, uh, and why not?